Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. It's Body Armor Destruction Day because I am the armor wizard, Zap Zap, and the king of body armor destruction. We have a panel from across the pond. This is a 10 by 12 model from Ronin Armor Systems. This is their TYR, let me check that out, TYR VPAM 3 or NIJ level 3A panel. Now what makes this system so unique is we'll have to wait to the teardown to get a good idea is that there are multiple different layers of ballistic material that make up this system. Traditionally, you either see, you know, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene 100% through and through, or you see an aramid or Kevlar material 100% through and through. This is kind of like the AR500 armor hybrid level three that we tested a long time ago where there's different layers that help either catch projectiles or slow down our trauma. This particular 10 by 12 model weighs one pound, eight ounces, or for those across the pond, 0.68 kilograms. It's approximately 580 thousandths thick or 14.57 millimeters. In full transparency, Anders over at Ronin Armor Systems sent us those panels to destroy with no strings attached. Now here comes the long-winded spiel. Over here on my channel, we do all of our armor demos completely different than anyone else on YouTube. Since this is pistol armor, we shoot at 12 feet. We also shoot at zero degrees because that represents a worst case scenario. When you add any oblique angles, you only increase the amount of material that the bullet has to travel through and that could falsely increase the plate's performance. Now, I am not an NIJ lab. I don't pretend to be one. I try to hold as many protocols out here as I can in my backyard, but again, not scientific. This is more of your infotainment. I'm not that funny, but I try to throw some dad jokes in there, here or there. So if you see me stop a threat here, whether you are a watcher or a manufacturer, you should always defer to actual NIJ or laboratory testing for a final call on what the back face or penetration could be. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay donated by Chavant. Again, that is the same clay that the NIJ uses, but I can't keep the temperature up here at around 100 degrees and certify the drop test. And there's all kinds of leftover bullet fragments inside of my clay. So it's just a representation of what back face could be. If we see back face, you know, over 44 millimeters, that's the NIJ limit. In a real world test with certified clay, that could be a bit more. We also use a chronograph whenever possible because we need to know the velocity of the bullet, whether it penetrated or not. I have a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX. It's around 60 to 65 degrees outside today and very sunny. And finally, we have a giant spreadsheet that we put here at the beginning and we kind of list out and foreshadow all the threats that we're going to shoot at it. And at the end, we do a teardown. We confirm all the velocities if we get them and whether the bullet penetrated or not. So you guys, again, have solid data to take away from this test. Given that our TYR panel from Ronin is European born. I figured this first threat would be a very good threat to shoot against. This is nine millimeters M39B. What is very unique about this particular cartridge is that it is lead core, but the actual jacket is bimetal. It's, it's got steel in it and it attracts a magnet and it's got this special super thick mushroom like shape on the top. I'll roll in a little macro of the cutaway so you can see what that's like. Got a four and a half inch Arex Delta Gen 2 here, got the primary arms, Holo Sun ACSS reticle up top. We're gonna have to move this panel a lot from shot to shot, left to right, because of the distance, the, how close it is. We wanna make sure we get chronograph readings off this. So this should be on the right side of the plate, probably towards the top. Twelve sixty something. Now we've stepped up our barrel length in 9 millimeter. We've got a 16 inch ARV9 from Palmetto State Armory. This represents a maximum real world velocity that you're going to see out of a majority of 9 millimeter loads. We have L7A1. That's a 124 grain full metal jacket. I use it because it's got quite a bit of charge in it and the velocity is up there. I think over 1400 feet per second from this particular barrel length. Then we've got Liberty Civil Defense 9mm. There's a 50 grain hollow point copper. 
It's known for, I think, about 2,500 feet per second in this particular barrel. There's a common misconception online that velocity alone defeats armor, and that's not always the case. Again, depending on the material with, you know, 100% aramid fiber panel, then that's pretty much true that if you get into over 1,500 feet per second, that's the limit of most of those panel systems. But polyethylene can take quite a bit of speed, so this hybrid panel will be very interesting. We'll take the Liberty Civil Defense shots last, if I don't throw them all over my table. And I have a habit of stacking these rounds on top of each other, so I'm going to take my time. Fourteen eighty-three, and then this one will be right below that one. And then this last one will be right below that as well. Okay, let me go check my shots before we move on to the Liberty Civil Defense. And now for our Liberty Civil Defense, we'll go to the left side of the plate. Twenty five eighty two. Nice, solid velocity off that. I go back and forth between shooting a whole bunch of shots on the plate and then coming down and checking it out versus taking fewer shots and coming down. And I think the video works out to be about the same length either way. So we're gonna err on the side of being cautious and patient today. Our Liberty Civil Defense shot number one was right here. Shot number two was right over here. Our M39B shot was right there, and our L7A1 shots number one, two, and three right there. All those are considered a fair hit in the NIJ's eyes. I would have to check VPAM, but we're maintaining two inch shot dispersion. Place those bets in the comments below. Ruh oh, Raggy. We had penetration from our M39B right there, as well as our Liberty Civil Defense shot number two. Shot number one looks to be contained. We will peel all of this away and confirm any of our penetrations in the end. It looks like we're using very high density foam on the back for back face protection. Now in terms of back face, that third shot of nine millimeter down here in the corner is gonna be the worst and it's in the corner and those tend to show the most back face right around 57 millimeters. Now, it did bunch it up there, so what usually happens is that corner can't stop it very well, so it tends to bunch up. But the first hit up here would be more realistic, right around 34 millimeters. Again, the clay is not up to temperature. It actually might be warmer than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be right around 100 degrees. It's been heating in my box. Let's clean this up and we'll see how this handles 44 Magnum. Now this is where we get into maximum energy transfer. We've got our 44 caliber bullet. This is a 240 grain semi-jacketed hollow core. The NIJ calls for some discontinued spear bullet. I couldn't find it, so I have a Sierra. Not the same, but I think close enough. Now for NIJ level 3A, the velocity spec is 1430. I don't have any long barrels to achieve that in 44 mag. When I loaded up this Desert Eagle here with our five inch barrel, I was maxing out the charge and still 90 feet per second short. But I have a solution. I have 429 Desert Eagle. This is essentially a 50, a 50 AE bullet or 50 AE case neck down to 44 caliber. I have two loads here. I'm still dialing in this particular load for velocity. So if we get over spec, I apologize. If we're under spec, I apologize again. With H110, it seems to be pretty temperature sensitive. So I gotta wait till it's a little warmer to dial in these loads. This one should be on the top middle of the plate. Wow, we were really close, but I might have pulled that. All right, shot number two should be pretty close to the center. 
Lots of velocity off that. All right, let's go see what we did. I need a little more trigger time on our Desert Eagle. The trigger's not really easy to get used to. So our first shot, I wanted to be up here, but I think I nose dived and ended up here. So that's not a fair hit in the NIJ's eyes. Shot number two was right down here. We are about three inches from the edge and more than two inches from other shots. I'm gonna consider that a fair hit. This was very close to spec, and then this is over 100 feet per second faster. So the back face signature will be interesting to see. Interesting. The 44 mag up here was actually stopped, even though it was a non-fair hit. And all that extra energy. Look at, look at the difference in the back face from that shot to that shot. Now, as far as our back face goes, the normal inspect shot 29 millimeters very impressive and then our over spec mr long and strong 51 millimeters now the likelihood of someone engaging anyone with a 44 mag of that nature is probably pretty slim but this just goes to show you how muzzle energy can translate into blunt force trauma when it comes to our soft armor now we're gonna step into my favorite caliber, 5.7 by 28 millimeter, a known armor penetrating king. Again, depending on the type of bullet. I have three here that are fairly interesting. I have from Elite Ammunition, this is their S4. It is the same bullet that 192, 195, and SS198 LF uses, but they're going a lot faster. I have two loads from r, &R Weapon Systems. This is their IS-130D V3. This is a 30 grain, copper sol or copper hollow point with a ballistic tip and then we have some elite ammunitions 40 grain pfp this is pre-fragmented so there's some lightning cuts in here to make this a very long pointed bullet we have our fn p90 sbr here doesn't have the fun switch but we've got a holo sun aems up top and a rail on the left and light mount on the right from hbi industries very nice little mount system so far I'm kind of liking the Holosun AEMS on here because it's got a wide field of view and it's green and I can see it pretty darn good. I had an MRO up here originally, but I had, I guess I have astigmatism and that dot wasn't a good dot for me, so I changed it out. Had the Primary Arms 1X Cyclops on there too. That's a very good mount for this. So the S4 should be first. Try to go, should be a two inch drop. Let's see. 25.55, let me check my shot. So if my offsets are correct, shot number two of S4 should be directly above that. Ooh, nice and warm. Then our shot of the r, &R weapon systems is gonna to be to the right. All right, our second shot of the on our weapon system should be at the top of this plate. All right, then our PFP will be to the left of it. Our second shot of S4 was not a fair hit, so we're gonna put another one on the panel and hope that it is a fair hit. I apologize about S4 shot number two. I always tend to put things way too close to each other and at 12 feet, people always wonder how I can't hit my target. I can, but I put shots too close. So shots number one, number two, and then we took a third shot for a fair hit. Our r, &R weapon system shots number one and two, those are fair hits. Then our 40 grain PFP shot was right there. Place those bets in the comments below. Ho! Only one pass through on our non-fair hit of S4. Otherwise, all those shots were stopped. We will confirm for any penetrations in the end, but we don't see any holes in the clay besides that one from that second shot of S4. Now for a new cartridge to the scene, this is 8.6 Blackout. Now this is a rifle cartridge, so there is no soft armor 3A that's rated for rifle cartridges, but 
This particular bullet's claim to fame is subsonic use. It has an ultra fast twist rate, one in three inches. Commonly you see one to seven to one to nine in 5.56. Five, you can see one to six or one to eight in 300 blackouts. So this is spinning bullets very, very fast. A majority of your lead core bullets will spin apart actually if you get them going supersonic speeds. So I have four different loads here that are subsonic, meaning that they're below the speed of sound, approximately 1130 feet per second. We have a 250 grain PPU full metal jacket. We have a 300 grain boat tail hollow point. We have a 250 grain brass solid, then a 285 grain ELD match. We have an eight inch Faxon barrel build over here from Palmetto State Armory. We'll take the ELD shot last, the boat tail hollow point third, our brass solid second, and our full metal jacket first. Have a JK armament pistol kit on here. We are waiting for our pork chop from Q. Nine thirty-one. So we are indeed subsonic, and now our brass solid. I uh, heard some things flying there, folks. Now our boat tail hollow point. Nice. And now our ELD match. Cool. All right, all of our shots are on our panel, and I think I have fair hits. Our full metal jacket shot was right here. Our solid brass spun is right here. Now be careful in the United States about these because there are legalities involving brass projectiles. Won't go there today. Our boat tail hollow point was right here, and our ELD match was right there. Place those bets and cross blow. Hey, uh oh, Raggy. Our solid brass guy poked right through that. Again, that's a rifle projectile. Soft armor is not in any way, shape, or form rated for that. Cool that our ELD and all of our other rounds were stopped. As far as our back face goes, right around 32 millimeters for that full metal jacket. And then our ELD match, right around 33 starting to bunch the plate up a little bit so we're getting a little more dispersion going on there but interesting so our subsonic loads in 8.6 black unless they're specialty likely would be stopped in level 3a now for a lot of my followers favorite part is the tear down and there's a lot of different layers in here that i think that's very interesting so here's panel number one here's our l7a1 i actually found that just laying inside we have just your basic nylon cover here is panel number one inside here. It's kind of like a aramid fiber. It's a little stretchy, very interesting. Then panel number two is our spectra shield or our ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. And here are our 44 mag bullets. You can see that that second one actually at the higher velocity made it quite a little deeper in there, but not too much. And then we have another layer here that's like Kevlar, but it's a different type of material. We will annotate what these different layers are to double check because some of the names are really hard to pronounce and for me to remember. So let's not murder them. Now, what I like going on with this construction is that we are sewing and trying to capture the edges of these panels so that they don't delaminate. We have sewing there and there. Interesting. Then our third panel is another sheet of our aramid fiber and this carbon fiber-like material. Decent adhesion there. Very thin layer there. Another layer of our spectra shield. Caught some more bullets in there. There's our Liberty Civil Defense. For whatever reason, that second one 
must have just found a weak spot in there. We're still sewing our layers. There's some more of the more polished-like Kevlar stuff. And again, another, and the final layer, I should say, is another layer of our thin aramid and that carbon fiber hard-like stuff. I'm saying stuff a lot. And then for back face control, we've got our high density foam on here. This is very similar to the foam that we see Hesco using. And I like this foam a lot. It seems to do a pretty good job. And our penetrations were from the Liberty Civil Defense and that crazy M39B. There was nothing slowing that down. As far as our second plate goes, our only penetrations were that second unfair hit of S4 and our brass solid some of those these two rounds up here deformed our material here but that particular material caught it there is our little 40 grain pfp i believe very very interesting setup there's one of our s4s that it stopped mushroom that guy right out fragments all over the place cool i don't know about you guys but i kind of like this assembly i almost would trade a little more of this spectra shield in here and take some of the kevlar like material out but very very impressive there is our full metal jacket our boat tail hollow point and our eld match round mushroom that right out well if anything folks this tyr panel from ronin armor systems has many chapters it's almost as thick as moby dick that's what she said we stopped a lot of interesting and unique threats against this panel today i would say all those different materials that make up the panel really helped us here we stopped 44 mag and 9 millimeter which is our nij level 3a standard without an issue we stopped some really fast five seven rounds which can be a concern for people our specialty loads like our m39b and our solid brass spun 8.6 blackout are kind of outside of the purview of the nij that's where we're playing into bullet construction and bullet materials to help myself win against this particular panel. If you are looking at picking up a pair of these panels, there are no US distributors right now, but maybe you're across the pond, so that and shipping may make it worthwhile. They're around 215 euros. I'll have to annotate if different. I do have an affiliate code set up for them, which basically earns me a sales commission credit, costs you nothing and saves you 10%. With all that being said, I'm gonna get the heck out of here because it's lunchtime and I'm hungry. At the end of all of my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have a link tree in the description below with various ways to contact me and ask me any questions and or support the channel by helping us fund more ammunition purchases. Number two is Anders over at Ronin Armor. Again, in full transparency, provided us with those level 3A panels to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Thank you.